we have to expose lies and reveal the truth. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, and we are in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I am grieved when I look at our people that are being deceived by these seducing spirits. The Bible tells us, be not as children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the sight of man. So tonight I want to talk about proof or evidence that African Americans and other blacks in the Western Hemisphere are not Hebrew Israelites. If, if African Americans and other blacks in the Western Hemisphere were the original Hebrew Israelites genetically, what would it matter? What if they were? Ethiopian. They even have a European look to them. Thin noses, thin lips. And you look at some of the, the statues in Egypt. Go back and look at them. You see how thin their noses were? Real thin noses, small lips, glory to God. To show you, these people was not a man jack black folks, even though they were Hamites. In Ethiopian. They even have a European look to them. Thin noses, thin lips. And you look at some of the the statues in Egypt. Go back and look at them. You see how thin their noses were? Real thin noses, small lips, glory to God. To show you, these people was not a man jack black folks, even though they were Hamites. Y'all look at some of the pictures of the Africans. You know, the Bible talks about the Israelites. They had like long, wavy hair. Amen, glory to God. They had bushy hair. The women had long hair. You look at them slaves that came across the transatlantic slave trade. Y'all see some of them pictures? Y'all go look at some of them slave pictures in the, in the, in the 19th century, in the 17th, uh, 18th century, and some of the pictures. No, no women had hair probably about an inch long. These people were not Hebrew Israelites. Shematic people are not yet black. Abraham was not yet black. Now, if you say that you're an uh, uh, Israelite, you're a descendant of Abraham. Abraham wasn't yet black. So how do you turn out to be jet black? And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. See? Oh, it had to be black. Because he put his hand in his bosom and brought it out. It was white. So it had to be black. If a Mexican, <laughs> American Indian put his hand in his bosom and bring it out. It's gonna be white. They not white. If a Puerto Rican put his hand in his bosom and put it out, it's gonna be white. Furthermore, if a white man put his hand in his bosom and pull it out, amen. It's, if he get leprosy, it's gonna be white. White folks ain't really white. They look pink and red. Let's find out if David was a, was, had thick lips, wide nose, and nappy hair. Not a hair. Not the same of being black. You know, these folks, they Hebrew is like, what you say for being an African? You say for being, uh, 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 being a descendant from a man, Native Africans? They won't be black. Folks don't want to be black. Blue black. But they don't want to accept that they are descendants from the people from Africa. And he sent and brought him in, David. Now he was ruddy. The word ruddy is defined as red. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Racha ha kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, your followers, the uh, fellow believers of this truth, and shalom to the elect 
I want to touch real quick on this video because this can be confusing to some, you know, especially there may be some brothers or sisters who are new coming in. And I don't know if I'll be able to hit all the points, but I'm going to try to tackle the different points that this um, hireling, I meant this pastor who is set up under a curriculum to teach that we're basically Canaanites. He didn't want to say that. But that was taught by British Israelism and um, Christian nationalism through the um, the uh, the Protestant Protestantism, evangelicals, and so forth. You know, how they set it up, they set the system up for us to um, take our heritage, as the Scripture says. Um, they they cause us to discontinue from our heritage. Jeremiah seventeen and four. You know, and so forth. I believe Psalm 82 and 6, they take in crafty counsel. But anyway, uh, I just want to touch here on, uh, I want to go into a couple translations. Um, a couple things he said. He said the Israelites were short. <laughs> I don't know where he gets this from. But uh, he don't, he doesn't know any history. And I'm not going to go into too many sources. But uh, even when you read, the story of Saul. Saul was tall, taller than the rest of the Israelites, you know, and the Most High took our statue. So we were pretty tall. You had the Egyptians that was just taller, right? They, you had, um, you had Goliath, you know, the story of David and Goliath. It wasn't that, I guess this, in this guy's eyes, David was like a pygmy or something, three feet tall. I don't know. These, these are some weirdos. So anyway, he went into the Egyptians, and um, he doesn't, I don't think he understands the history of Egypt. See, if he understood all the history, or he believed in the history, then he would know a little bit more from 71 AD or 70 AD, and um, what happened of the Israelites going up into Spain and Portugal, um, West Africa, and a disperse, right, because you had... Um, you had the Moors of Spain later on. We was in there for a period of time. So a period of time, we would lay, especially uh, we as, as men, we mingled with other tribes as well, right? You got to know if we mess with other tribes, that, that um, our children, our daughters would come out with short hair. And the Most High took the daughter of Zion's hair, you know, so that also proves that. And um, uh, so also when you look at Phineas, Phineas, the grandson of, I believe, Aaron, um, uh, grandson of, who is he grandson of? Let me look it up real quick. Um, but when you look, when you look at Phineas, Eleazar, I think, um, his name was considered the mouth of brass. And when you look up the mouth of brass, in a blue letter, it says mouth of brass. And so when you go into any Google search or any search, um, it'll say that Phineas, um, mouth of brass means Egyptian Negro, right? The Egyptian Negro, which means dark. And what this man don't understand is the history of Ptolemy coming down in uh, um, Egypt out of one of the generals of Alexandria. Alexander, um, who had more than four generals, by the way, but he went down in um, Egypt, conquered Egypt, and the Egyptians started, he started adopting the practice of the Egyptians, started cutting off the nose of the Finks and putting up their noses. So this guy's only listening to the history that this man put up. He's not going into true secular history, right? And then you had the Romans that came um, later and uh, also conquered the Greeks and it became the Greek Greco-Roman Empire. So I don't know what he's talking about but when you go to ancient Egypt. And another thing is that every everybody that was uh, an Israelite wasn't jet black. So I don't know where he gets that from. Maybe it's other Israelites teaching that all Israelites are black. When you had situations for many years, even before... Um, the transatlantic slave trade that you had 
our people as Israelites laying with other nations. You can go in the Old Testament of the scriptures and said uh, that's what it was the law, not to give your daughters, sons and daughters to other people. And our people were doing that, right? So it's it's clear. It's not so much a skin color thing, right? Deuteronomy 28, 64 says, the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even into the other. And thou shalt serve other gods in wood and stone. I believe it says that. So we will follow Christianity. We will follow Islam. We'll follow Buddhism and every other religion. So we're going to look like other nations and other people. But in this guy's mind, there is no way an Israelite can be. And um, even white people don't even teach that. Even white people don't believe we Israelites do teach that there's a, a portion of us who could be Israelites, but doesn't mean the majority of us are. When that is not the case, the majority of the so-called blacks, Negroes, Native Americans, they are Israelites. Now you do have the wheat, you know, amongst the tares. So you're going to have some that are not. So anyway, just to debunk this guy, um, this, uh, when he went into Ruddy, let me see if I can go to Ruddy. Samuel 16, I believe, what is it, 12? Um, so I don't think he understands um, what Ruddy uh, actually is. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's 16 and 14 or 18. I'm not sure. But we're going to go into um, what Ruddy actually means i think it's 16 and 12 so uh it says and he sent and brought him in now he was ruddy and with all a beautiful countenance so a lot of times when you see a particular word like that and you keep reading and it talks about what is it, it actually talking about what it is describing so ruddy just simply means a beautiful countenance but when you go deep into ruddy you can take, um, you can Google or you can search anywhere, any search engine and look up ruddy. Yeah, they'll throw red in there, but red never really meant ruddy. You know, I mean, ruddy never really meant pure red. This is why when you go to uh, the story of Jacob and Esau, it, is, uh, it says Esau was red all over like a hairy garment. Then they try to put ruddy in there as the definition. But when you look at red, why didn't it say, now you would look at ruddy. If you look at it in the context of red, being more redder than red, because it's ruddy, meaning, you know, in their mindset, meaning extra red. So why didn't Genesis 25 and 25 say Esau was ruddy, red and ruddy all over like a hairy garment? So we're going to go into some definitions that they these guys tend to leave out. In, a, in the other standard translations. So it's kind of amazing that the Lord put the spirit on these people not to totally destroy our heritage. He put it in hidden text so we can go search search it out. So when you go to the Christian Standard Bible, it says, So Jesse sent forth him, and he was beautiful and healthy, handsome appearance. Right? That's what what ruddy means but we're going to go deep into what ruddy actually means in the international standard version it says so he went and brought him he had a dark and healthy complexion right so the israelites all didn't have the same exact complexion you know we were different shades of the ground so i don't know why this man he's isolating and saying that we all saying that we were all just jet black like some black Africans in a tribe, right? That's what he's saying. Now, clearly, we mixed with other nations. Okay, we had concubines, and some of us gave our sons and daughters to other nations, other nations back and forth, right? You see this story with the Midianite woman, well, going to Moses and Miriam, okay? And then he goes into the, Point, I want to bring this out goes into the point where with Moses in his hand in the bosom and he pulled it out was white this man literally took it as white is uh, when it says white as snow if everybody has a kind of a dark or brownish complexion 
And I all of a sudden see some uh, Moses who was a dark man, was clearly because his brother Aaron is. And as I said, the mouth of brass was uh, Phineas, which is in that lineage, who's the, uh, even the scholar says, calls him the Egyptian Negro or the, um, the Nubian Negro, as they call it, which means he had to be very black. So if you take a very dark man and you take his hand and put it in his bosom and it comes out like a so-called white person's hand, what are you going to call it? This is why they get the terminology of that. But they put that name white on them for purity. But the terminology comes because if somebody's really dark and they come out all of a sudden looking like that, naturally that's where you get the term white from. But he can't see that. He's literally taking it as white like a piece of paper. It's no complexion. So anyway, the International Standard Version says, so he sent and brought him. He had a dark and healthy complexion with beautiful eyes. Now, the reason why I said this, because since the Israelites is already so-called black and different shades of brown, this is why it was mentioned even from uh, John the Revelator about Yahawashah. His feet was like fine brass, which is polished brass, which polished brass is very dark as it, as it is burned in a furnace. So you get polished brass that's already dark and burn it in a furnace. Because when you get high, when you highly melanated, you are actually healthy. You're unhealthy when you're not. And this is why the curse is on our people that the lighter you are, the worse off you are. When really this flesh profit of nothing as long as you got melanin. But even our people look like they don't have melanin at this point. It's the spirit. Anyway, the Cloverdale Bible, Cover, it says Cloverdale Bible, this is the 1500s. It says, then sent he and caused him to be brought and he was well colored and fair eyes. So, you know, later on during the British Israelism and the, um, how the, the so-called whites have taken over that arena. Naturally, when they take over that arena, they're going to take all the pictures, whitewash them, and then they brought in Ruddy to make it seem like it was them. They knew what Ruddy actually meant. And this is why you got Red Link with that. It really had nothing to do with being bright red. That's how they did it. It's called universalism, right? And racism. Uh, let's go to the New Heart English Bible. It says, he sent and was brought him in. This is talking about David. And he was reddish brown and had beautiful eyes. So he would be like what you would call a pretty boy today, as people, you know, the women would say. A nice looking man. Dark and handsome you heard the term i'm black and i'm proud i'm dark and i'm beautiful black and beautiful the black woman says that all the time now my blackness my blackness right <laughs> and that's another video my blackness but then they go somewhere else we know what it is anyway uh so this guy he just clearly doesn't know and let me go on to hosea 1 and 10 Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall be said unto them that ye are the sons of the living power. This is also quoted in Romans 9.26, as Paul quoted, which is here. This is the place where it said that ye are not his people. So those people that you see today, nobody's saying that ain't there in the place that they put themselves, see how they get trapped up? They wasn't there in the place now, but there's nobody saying that they're not the people. So it would have to be us. Anyway, we want to go also to this topic with the woman um, in Isaiah 3. 
and um, talking about the the woman got short hair. I want to back that up with the scriptures, right? Um, this is Isaiah three and sixteen. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks, and walk on eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord shall smite, or will smite with a scab or crown on the head of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover her their secret parts now all the stuff that's happening to our people in this society the drugs the the gang violence the shooting the killing the slavery you know the things that's happened and the um, the self-hatred is what you see with this guy don't see that on a high level anywhere else but here. So who would fit these prophecies? Right? Who would fit that? The Deuteronomy 28, 68. Who would fit that? Let's go on to 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Now the daughters of Zion smelled very well. But now when you got to throw on perfume and all kind of chemicals to smell well, what is that called? And instead of a girdle, girdle, a rent with the waist. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. Clearly, this guy hasn't read the Bible. He doesn't know the Bible. He doesn't know history. And the only thing was on his mind to say, hey, I'm going to catch these Hebrews in the doctrine. And he couldn't do it. That's all I have on that. Shalom.